In this video, I go straight on at turn one due to a wheel malfunction and the ghosting fails me as I put Rory off the circuit. Hello everyone and welcome back to a Gran Turismo video where I'm back in the Veyron and checking whether I was wrong. Was I wrong or not? Because I said you should use the Veyron this week because I believe this will be the meta car for the race. They may notice that I just paused. I, my wheel felt really weird at the start of this one. No idea why, but I pressed pause and I thought it had come back to normal. We'll see how we get on as we go into this race. There's contact up ahead between two drivers there, Lamborghini. I think that was an Alfa Romeo 4C. And that's the car we're also going to try here because that's currently the meta car here at Watkins Glen Short Circuit. 15 laps here as well as we go on the left hand side of that Alfa Romeo and bump draft Mori up ahead who bump drafts Digit as well. Gonna head towards the chicane, the Bugatti Veyron, of course, very quick in a straight line, which is why I say it is going to be a good car in the race this week. But we'll just see how good though. People are up to speed now in this one. This is done in the late afternoon on Monday, uh, which does mean everyone's been at it all morning, all day, and we're joining in the fun at this moment in time. I haven't only done one race so far, which was the morning race for the week, the race guide, which I will link at the end of this video if you are struggling with this combo. Heading towards the penultimate corner, then into the left we go. There's oversteer there by Digit, who then gets bump drafted by Popcorn. We go in the middle of three cars here. And look at this as we go through. We managed to make it all survive there. One going in the pit, Popcorn around the outside. There was a small bit of contact. Not much more I could have done there with the Lamborghini on my inside. And the hazards were whacked on as well. So I'm assuming that Maury was all happy with that, or Popcorn, as you see nicknamed on the replay. We continue on through there then. And we're in P9 at the moment. Look at the speed difference, though, between the Bugatti and the Honda. Look at it. It's absolutely insane here as we head towards the chicane. We're going to go down the inside then as we head into here. I'm going to go on the brakes, but Popcorn not giving this up side by side through chicane. And we make it work as well. You do not see that very often. And brilliant racing there with Popcorn. We've had some fantastic side by side so far. And we're already on lap number two. Lap number two as we continue on through. Alex Oni behind then in that Lamborghini. And that is another car people are picking. I'm not sure it's the car to go to this week. We'll see how Alex only gets on as we advance to lap number three then. And once again, we've got the run on Popcorn here. Look at the speed difference again. It is huge. Popcorn not got as much of a slipstream this time. I have a huge run on Popcorn as we head in towards the chicane. We're much further alongside this time. We go aggressive on the brakes. We get the job done up into P5. Of course, some people have gone in the pits right now. So I'm not sure exactly where we are. But we are still racing some very quick guys here. Popcorn behind Digit up ahead as we continue on through here. Rory's actually leading the race, I just noticed there. So well played to Rory as we go through these final few corners. Popcorn's so close there. It was right. We got Robin going in the pits in that GT by Citroen. It does compromise Digit here in the Alfa Romeo 4C. So we are going to see a bit of a drag race now between myself and Digit as we head towards turn one hard on the brakes and similar braking points here between the two cars even though the Bugatti does really ramp up the speed here on the exit and on this back straight then here we go Bugatti versus Alfa Romeo Tid versus Digit in a straight line let's see who is going to come out on top then and look at this already you are seeing the drastic speed difference between these two cars it's huge even more so in the race obviously in qualifying the Alfa Romeo definitely is the faster car in qualifying in race pace though remember you have the weight of the fuel as we jump up all popcorn and as I've gone by Digit in towards the chicane we go I run a little bit deep here Digit has to break unfortunately popcorn just doesn't see that and hits Digit there just a mistake there and look at that popcorn waiting up good sportsmanship but in the race, the Bugatti Veyron has the power to keep pulling the additional weight that all the cars get with the added fuel on top. For those that don't know, in qualifying, in practice mode, you have no tyre wear and you have no fuel usage, which means you've got no fuel weight. In towards right, we go then. Rory going in the pits. I do have to slow it up a little bit there. It does compromise me here. And we are looking like we're going to be winning this race at the moment. We catch up to Jagiri then in the Honda NSX. In towards the chicane, I don't always send it down here just because I don't want to lose too much time. I have to think of the long game here. Yes, maybe I'll lose a tenth here or there. But if I go for the overtake there, potentially we lose a second, two seconds, or even crash, which is long, well, worse in the long term because we are racing people who've already pit and they're on their own strategy at the moment. So we have to think about this in this race as we head once again to the penultimate corner here in towards the left-hander we go and um, what's Jagiri going to do then they're staying towards the right so they're going to go in the pits this is going to compromise me through here then I have to slow up that little bit more then it really does compromise me how much speed have I lost there about four miles an hour or so then 
as we continue on to the next lap. However, I'm trying to change gear right now, and you notice that I'm trying to turn the wheel, Ah, my wheel has decided it doesn't want to work anymore. And I go flying into the barrier there. So we're having a fantastic race, ruined by the wheel. And I have no idea what's going on here. So you can see me pressing all sorts of buttons, you know. Uh, so I grab my pad here just to get going again. And I, again, I'm looking behind. No real issues there, to be honest with you. So I start pressing the power button on the wheel. And uh, yeah, it's just going to come back to life as if nothing ever happened. And there we go. It's back connected. No idea what went well on there. And I was very frustrated with this one, to be honest with you, because I was having a fantastic race. I really was. Uh, so anyway, let's jump into the next race. Let's forget about what happened there. Let's try the video on this time, shall we? Right, okay, here we go then. So Popcorn up ahead, now in the Alfa Romeo. They were in the Honda NSX in that previous race. And look at the difference straight off the line here. We are actually passing the Alfa before turn one. That's how much power this Bayron has as we go into here. The slipstream helps enormously in this Bayron as well because it's a big old car. And with the car ahead punching that hole in the air, we can just fly straight through it and use that power to our advantage. We go up here then, we're staying ahead of Popcorn. We're seeing that Alfa Romeo can't really overtake us here at the moment. They're very close behind, but they are being dropped slowly but surely in this. And the further up the speed we go, the further it drops off as well. Now, the Spice Driver here really backs off here, and I was unsure what was going on. I was thinking about going for the dive, backed out of it because I was confused. Really confused as we go through here. Then Popcorn's sitting close now behind as we go into the right hand. Uh, Saeed just gets it slightly wrong there. They're racing in VR, I believe, because of their nickname, maybe. Anyway, in towards the right we go, and we're trying to get on the right hand side here. And they just get the gearing wrong there to the Spanish driver. So we get a big old run. Are we going to get past before the end? Yes, we do. So we go towards the middle there, sort of to indicate a defensive move. And Saeed, that's struggling with their internet connection a little bit. You might want to get off the McDonald's Wi Fi for this one, as we are having a fantastic race so far. Hearty going in the pit. Say hello to you. You said hello in the lobby as well. Saeed says hello to Barry R, and we're going to go alongside them and hopefully be ahead of them before turn one. Look at the speed difference there. It's massive, absolutely massive in this very run. And we go into turn one then. Here we go, up into P7. Obviously, we have no idea exactly where that is as we advance to lap number five where we catch up to the NSX of Memphis 48 YouTube. Alex, only behind me in that Lamborghini once again. A familiar sight from the previous race then as we continue on through here and head on to the start, finish straight here, start lap number six. Now, are we going to go for the move in towards turn one? That is the question. No, we back out of it. Again, thinking about the long-term strategy in terms of this race. As we go into the right-hander then, we're looking to get the momentum out the corner. That we do. And we can go on the inside of this NSX then and hopefully get the job done here as we go up here. The speed difference is enormous. And I, this is why I said use the Veyron, especially in the lower driver rating lobbies because people will struggle more with the handling very easy to overtake in a straight line so it is worthwhile doing now i don't know how easy or hard the 4c is to drive it used to be quite difficult to drive we are going to try that in this video it's something we will try and oh at one point five second penalty for a track cut then let's have a look at this one then through the chicane you could just see it there we have more than two wheels off the circuit that is a, definitely a penalty now when i do this some people say i didn't get the right frame trust me i check now, 5.7 seconds behind digits. Oh, let's see what one and a half seconds actually costs us. 5.7 on 7.7, that's two seconds. Ooh, about 2.4 seconds it costs us. We're zooming back out then. We're already on the back straight here, heading towards the chicane. And Memphis up ahead then. Are we going to go for the move? No, we're not. We're going to back out of this again. Trying to think the long game. I've said it a few times now. Hopefully you're not having a drinking game. You're going to get very drunk very quickly. I might say long game a bit more often. Who knows? Anyway, in towards the right. In fact, we advance to lap number 10 then. And we've got a bigger run on Memphis this time. Look at how much further back we are in the slipstream. But look at this speed difference. It's got to be at least nearly, what, six, seven miles an hour here. We're going down the inside this time. Hard on the brakes. There we go. Job done. Three we go. Happy days. P4 it is and now then, we advance further on lap 14. We're going to come in the pits for this one. We have to. That's the law of this daily race as we come in here then. So we're not going to change tyres or fuel up in this Bugatti Veyron. My pit crew wondering what on earth I'm doing pulling into the pits. Obviously, they do know the rules. I have to come in at some point. I just don't have to change tyres. Anyway, we're going to continue on out of here then. We're currently in P5. Now down to P6 as the Honda goes by. P7 as Shagiri goes by in that Honda. Now, if we didn't get the penalty... We would have been ahead of these guys. And just on our inside here, we've got Turok from Ukraine in the Alfa Romeo 4C then. And we drop down to P8. But can we get the position back? You can see we're already up to the same speed as that Alfa already. 
So how much pull this car really does as we head in towards the chicane then slowing the car down nicely anyone make a mistake up ahead that is the question nope no mistakes at all then so let's actually advance to the end of the race because no mistakes happened and we finished there in the end down in i can't actually see where i finished oh there we go p8 of course i was in p8 i just said it a second ago so you know the very one it's fun to drive we are struggling a little bit on speed. I would say it's probably a tenth slower than the Alfa Romeo 4C probably at the moment. Looking at faster slaps and such. We'll jump into this one, which is the Alfa Romeo 4C. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's see what kind of lap times we can set, who we can race, can we overtake, and whether I was right or wrong in saying that you should use the Bugatti Veyron. We've advanced towards the end of lap one already because we're not in the Veyron. It was much harder to catch up to the next car ahead. But this car, all about handling this Alfa Romeo 4C. It always has been. The Aston Martin there just struggling on the left hander. So struggling with a bit of handling here. Going to the right here. Look at this side-by-side -side action with Phil. And that is beautiful racing. Just need enough space for each of us there. And oh, that was brilliant stuff. Really good stuff there. Is the Aston Martin going to come back at me? That is the question. Now, this Alfa can break very late into corners. And no, the Aston Martin does back out of that. Thinks better of it as we go through turn number one then. Now, I'm getting used to this car as well. I had about four or five minutes practice in between each of the races and we're going to be looking up ahead then at the french driver in the gt by six and a few people picking that car nice to see a mixture of cars coming into play remember we saw alex Oni earlier in that lamborghini i've used the bugatti v1 i showed you it's actually capable here i'm in the alpha 4c which is considered the meta car certainly in qualifying but we'll see what happens in terms of race pace in towards the chicane we go then the citroen goes a bit deep here um, we've got a slow car ahead. oh it's rory here and as we go into here oh i hit rory off there even though he was ghosted on the screen rory was ghosted and yet it still pushed him off so the ghosting system not working to the best play there in my opinion the ghosting should have returned after the chicane I became reliant on it all the same. Now, what actually happened is, it's Rory versus Key. Oh, slight tap from Key. Forces Rory onto the grass. Goes for a spin. And that will force the reset then onto the right-hand side of the circuit. And this is where ghosting is a bit of a weird system. Because it can work well here, like, for example, with a French driver. And you can see there, Rory actually ghosted on the replay as well. So it shows still ghosted. Just came out of ghosting, even though it visually didn't come out of ghosting. And that's what caused the incident. So I am going to wait up for Rory here, just so we can get racing again. It was my fault. I relied on the ghosting system. It didn't work. And that is the end result. So you can see here, I'm waiting up. Rory's actually going to flash me there once, just to say I can get going again. I think Rory's going to flash again. I'm pretty sure. There we go. Yeah, just to say to get racing. Maybe even just to say thank you for waiting up there as well. And there's no worries. I, I'm fair play as best as I can. That was clearly on me. I relied too much on the ghosting system. Now, we go into lap number three, and the leaders are coming out of the pit. So this is going to get very interesting very quickly as we go past... I think that's Ghost Baby. I'm not too sure because they've got, like, three or four accounts, but they're using a Ghost Baby livery. So I'm going to call them Ghost Baby from now on because... Actually, I'll call them Mantis. That's an easier way to pronounce their name. We'll call them Mantis. So... Lap number three, we're just out of the leaders. Now, I don't want to intervene in the leaders race too much as Key's now waiting up for Rory there. So obviously I had a thought about it. Uh, I assume live streaming, so maybe they've had a conversation about it as well, maybe. And Rory, uh, sorry, Key waiting up for Rory there to uh, have a race. It was obviously a mistake, just a tiny bit too much to the left-hand side, just forced Rory onto the grass. Now, here we go. I go over towards the left-hand side here to let Mantis go then as they are provisionally in the lead, I believe. And I'm going to fall in behind. And my whole goal here is I want to stay with the Italian driver to see if I can get up to speed in the Alfa Romeo to do another race because I don't want to finish this race on this one in particular because I want to give it a good shot. You know, Veyron versus Alfa Romeo, which is the better car? Was I right? Was I wrong? The Italian there gets a penalty. Now, they were extending that gap quite a bit, so I'm still getting used to this car. But this is where I start to get into the feel of this car and my lap time start coming down very quickly. The Italian pulling me along here. Now, you can see here, they're going towards the right side. I didn't want them to do this. I'm edging over towards the left and flashing him to say, come over, mate, come over. I don't want to race you. I want to bump draft you. Come on over. And I'm edging left to sort of signify that. They don't do that. And uh, I assume it slows them down a little bit. They're right behind me. You can see that in the rear view as I go for a bit of a slide there. It's also arguably P2 at the moment. This time, they are defending, but I bump draft them on purpose there to say, Come on, mate. Just keep going forward. Now, you could argue I'm intervening in the P1 battle here because Pedro behind is trying to catch up. But even so, Pedro is in my slipstream, so should be catching up all the same. And I find Mantis is actually making a fair few mistakes in some of these corners. Lap number eight. Here we go again. Bump drafting. I'm trying to indicate 
I want to work with you. I want to go forward here. I'm not trying to race you. Now, when Pedro does catch up to me, I will get out of the way. Of course, I will. I'm not trying to intervene in this battle at all. But Mantis is making a lot of mistakes here. Uh, and that's why I'm staying so close to Mantis as well through these. Slipstream helping. Don't get me wrong. But I am staying close. Another mistake there. A huge slide through the right hander here as we continue on then. And we're going to be in that slipstream once again. So they go left. I'm flashing him again. Get over. Get over to the right side. There we go. I think they got the message this time as we go into, you know, this is one of those things where when I flash, generally it's to say I want to help you. I don't really flash in Gran Turismo to say get out of my way. Very rare I would do that, to be honest with you. Now, obviously, in ATC and endurance racing, I flash a bit more when I'm trying to make progress or when I'm trying to, you know, benefit each other and say keep going. Uh, but even so, Mantis there makes another mistake. So at this moment, I'm like, okay, forget this. I'm going to go now because you're struggling at this moment for some reason. So I go on the inside of the Italian driver as we go up here. Then I'm like, you two fight behind me. Pedro, Mantis, you have your fight. Let me go. And then I'm not involved in it. And then I can continue on with my race. But no, Mantis wants to go for it. So at this point, I'm like, okay, that's fine. What I'm going to do, I'm going to back off here. I'm going to let them to have their race. There we go. And Pedro actually pulls in behind there. So I actually cost Pedro a little bit. I would have let you go there. Uh, but even so, we're back into where we were before, <laughs> frustratingly. There was these brief yellow flag. Not sure what that was for then. As we got very close to Mantis and through the right-hander. You can see I've actually picked up the speed quite nicely now in this car. Really, I'm enjoying it. Again, I go over towards the right side here to let Pedro go. Uh, so they can have their fight for P1 at this moment. I just want to stay with them. Um, I'm hoping they don't slow me down too much. As we go up here, I just lift off a little bit there. Because I'm a bit too close to the braking zone for a bump draft. As we go into here, I take the nice line here. Pedro, unfortunately, goes very far to the left inside, which does give that one point. It's a brutal penalty, that one. It really is. 1.5 second penalty. You can see Mantis in distance has a 0.5 penalty as well as we continue on out of here. So there's a potential that I am going to get past Mantis here and then get past Pedro, and then hopefully I can have a bit of clear air. We head towards the left-hander, though, and coming into here, uh, Mantis just tapped my rear there. I wasn't happy with that at all, to be honest with you. I really wasn't at the time. You can see my facial reaction there. I was just like, what are you doing? What's the point in that? You know, and I get a trap limit penalty for it as well, so very frustrating. Well, have a look from Mantis's perspective here, though. So just come across... It's the times of that. It's just a small mistake there from them. They obviously want to try and defend the line. I feel like it wasn't a necessary thing there, to be honest with you. And it actually resulted in this, then this side by side between the two. We've got a front row seat for the lead battle here. And Mantis go through. Pedro Silva, 1.5 second penalty. At this moment in time, I completely forgot I had a 0.5 second penalty. I was so focused on Mantis and staying with the Italian driver that I literally came out of here. Went over towards the right, knowing Pedro was going to take the penalty. And then uh, I got surprised there by the penalty myself. Lap 15 then. Here we go. We've been in the pit since. Uh, popcorn's just up ahead. So, you know, we managed to recover a little bit here. Unfortunately, we go way off the circuit. So that's going to be a penalty. Of course it is. And up ahead, somebody else taking a penalty here. The Spanish driver. Now, for those that don't know, if you do get a 0.5 second penalty or 1.51, it rounds up at the finish line. So I have to be one second ahead. Now, you notice I'm left inside. I'm very close to being one second ahead. I don't quite do it. I do lose a place there right at the very end. Six thousandths of a second difference just because it rounds up to that plus one second. So that's the end of that really horrible race that happened, unfortunately. Ghost in. Let's jump into this one then. Let's see what the Alfa Romeo can do. And let's have a really good comparison. Bugatti versus Alfa Romeo. Here we go then. So lap number one. Levitius up ahead. Shout out to Levitius. Nice to see you, mate. Just check out Levitius on Twitch and YouTube as we head down towards turn number one then in we go in a long line of cars now that's actually the end of lap one mainly because nothing happened on lap one if it did surprise you that we were that close to each other we're gonna head up here then and someone has got a penalty up ahead i think that's prime minister sean with that penalty in a honda nsx as we continue on through here then and levity is getting close to lent here is levity is going to go for the move I'm not too sure. I can't remember what on earth happens in this race. So it'll be a surprise to me as well. Levitius looking, looking, looking. Doesn't go for it. Very close to the barrier there. Man. Well, that was very close indeed as we continue on through here. So nothing happened. We are line of stern. This is where I find the Pagatis a bit better, to be honest with you, in terms of racing. We're all stuck in the same slipstream. So we're not really making progress other than the car ahead really needs to help us make progress. And I find that that can get a bit boring potentially. We'll see how it goes in this race, though. You can see the Ukrainian there going towards the left-hand side. We're going to be two by two through the left-hander then. Sean on the outside of the left here. So I'm on the outside of the Ukrainian. I do get that position then as we go into the right-hander. Sean was looking to defend it. Does defend it indeed. Levitius was looking for the cutback. Doesn't quite work here. 
as we head on to lap number three. Levity is down the inside of the Honda NSX. And so first lap here with the action as we go on to the brakes. And in we go, Levitius through, goes slightly understeers off there. Force is shown off the circuit, and we're going to get a position. Does Sean get a penalty from that as well? Yes, he does. Oh, I'd probably give that one back, Levitius, to be honest with you. That was so close. You could argue that Sean Gee should have given it up, maybe. I don't know. In my opinion, that's one that probably should have been given back because you did run the full length or exit of the circuit. If so, Levitius is a good sportsman. I know that, so Levitius will have a reason for, for that at the time. I think it's Levitius hundreds of times now, I would believe, at this point. And uh, it's always been a good race. Somebody was just off the circuit there. No idea who that was. Let's actually have a look at the replay for this one. From board, flying at mid here as we go into the chicane. We're nearly three wide there at one point. Popcorn's in here as well. They do defend this nicely. However, the oversteer comes and MR cars are hard to catch. And heads off into the barrier. Popcorn, unfortunately, goes off as well. And they exit the race then. Let's jump back on board then at the end of lap three. You can see some action up ahead then. Popcorn's going in the pits with a 0.5 second pace. We've got a good run of Levitiers here. Hearty's just up ahead as well. Pretty sure I've already said hello to you once, but I'll say hello again to you as we head towards turn number one. Levitiers going for the bump draft here as we go on the inside, and we do get that position right behind Hearty, though, as we continue on out of here. My goal here, then, is to bump draft, hopefully catch up to that GT by Citroen. That was the plan, at least, because I was so close to Harty. The Harty just went a bit more to the right than I expected, so I ended up with a run here out of the blue, and it wasn't actually intended at all here. And Levity is, does give me a bump draft. I appreciate that. Big, big thank you as we head towards the chicane. Can we get this done? And with the help of Levitius, yes, we can, then, as we go into here. Does Levitius get past the well? Yes, indeed. It's a good opportunistic drive in there from the South African and we're up into P7 up ahead we've got the GT by Citroen of Leprechaun we'll go with that uh, and Rivers Racing nice to see you as well now because those two are racing I decided to come in the pits at this moment in time I thought you know what let's save some time here come in the pits not get caught up in the action let me see us follow suit there comes into the pits with a flash of the lights as well saying maybe work together I assume I'm not going to refuel or change the tyres this car is very light so I don't expect the tyres to be at all a problem in this one as we leave the pits in a bit of clean air, it looks like here as well. So lap number seven is about to begin. And we're going to try and catch up to Rory, who is 4.5 seconds up the road. Actually pulling away, of course, at the moment. So we're getting up to speed. That gap starts to come down here. As you can see, I think Rory had a penalty on one lap. 1 1.8 seconds on lap number 11. The chase is on here. Can we do it? That is the question. We advance to lap number 12, 1.5 seconds now. Roy's getting bigger in this pitch as we go through the chicane. I'm absolutely yeeting at this moment in time. Look at those lap times on the right hand side as well. 1.14.5, 1.14.5. We are going to advance to lap 13, 1.14.6. The consistency is real, folks. It is real. And I would say this Alfa Romeo is actually very fun to drive, uh, if I'm brutally honest with you. I'm very consistent, much more consistent than I expected. Um, so I'd argue I'm a little bit wrong, a little bit wrong here with what I said in my weekly race guide. 1.3 seconds behind Rory, then lap 13. What we will do now is we are going to advance to lap 14. Let's see what that gap comes down to now. 0.9 seconds. Can we do it on the final lap? We're going to stay with this throughout the final lap. Let's see if we can catch Rory then. 1.14.3 on this lap. But look at the right side, the consistency there. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Getting the slipstream, a 0.3. So you can see how much slipstream does have an impact there. A quit set with a 1.13.9 fastest lap. Up ahead, the Leprechaun comes out the pits in the GT by Citroen. Got the green lines as well to represent the Leprechaun. And they are still trying to get up to speed here. As we go towards the left-hand side, it does compromise me a little bit here. As you can see, Rory's extended that gap now, heading towards 9 tenths. It's about to come back down again because we are in that slipstream. It's going to be 8 tenths of a second. As we come into the chicane, though, this is my best chicane I ever do here. Look at this. Look at the speed maintained through there. That was absolutely epic. One of my best chicanes of the day so far. It really was. And you can see that gap shrinking 0.7 tenths of a second. And to Rory, can we do it as we continue on to the second back straight here at Watkins Glen short circuit? And we're going to get towards the penultimate quarter. By the way, people were asking about tire temps. It's an app, okay? It's not in the game, so don't panic. You're not missing out on something here. Over towards the left-hand side here, the gap down under half a second. I'm absolutely sending it here on every single corner to catch up to Rory, but we're not going to quite do it here. I am going to flash my lights there just to say thank you for that chase, Rory. It was really good fun, and Rory with a wiggle there as well. That's to say thank you. But come on with P7. I'm going to say this. The Alpha is actually more fun to drive than I expected, but you can use different cars. So was I wrong? 
a little bit wrong. The Alpha definitely worthwhile trying out here, but I would still argue the Bugatti Veyron will give you a bit more fun with more overtakes. That's going to be it for me now, folks. I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. The Weekly Race Guide's there. Also another video. And check out the partners in the description for some discounts and to help out the channel. Thank you as always. And I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.